folks, welcome back to my kitchen. Emily here, your Harvest Market Dietitian with yet another delicious recipe. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so glad you're here today. We have a really good recipe this week and just in time for National Margarita Day. How fun is that? So we're making chimichangas and um, traditionally speaking, chimichangas are like a deep fried burrito. So burritos typically do have um, lots of veggies, proteins, you know, chicken, beef, pork, beans, um, and rice, and maybe cheese, maybe a sauce of some kind. Anywho, I'm doing my take on a chimichanga, and we're going to bake these in the oven, but I have kind of a cool trick to give a nice, really kind of crispy crust on the outside. Um, that I'm really excited to share. And you can use it in lots of different instances um, if you want kind of like a crispy something or other on the outside. Um, so whether you're like roasting potatoes or like french fries or something like that in the oven, that's a really good trick. So what do we have? We have a skillet preheating right here. I do have my rice going. So you, um, I just gave you some minute brown rice, um, which is really easy to cook up. So. It is a one-to-one -one ratio of water to rice. So this is just half a cup of, I'm doing a two-person. This is just half a cup of the brown rice and half a cup of water and it's pretty much done. So I'm just gonna keep the lid on and take it off the heat until I'm ready to use it. So we have a ton of our vegetables here, uh, which is all going inside the filling. So what we're gonna do first is make the filling. Um, okay, so I have my pan preheating. And this is one of those fillings where it's really, really nice because you can kind of just chop and go, chop and go. So you just chop everything up, add it to the pan, and you're good to go. So we're gonna start with the onion. And everything is going to get a really nice, fine, chop, mince, dice, whatever you wanna call it. Um, really nice and small so that it comes together in the end, the really homogenous filling. Um, you get a little something in every bite. That is what I love about making stuff like this because you get all of the good stuff in every bite. So that's why I want to make it small. And also it'll cook faster and more evenly if everything is approximately-ish the same size. Okay, so I'm just peeling my onion and we're just gonna do a nice dice on this guy. So again, preheated pan. We're gonna get our um, oil in there just a little bit. Right in the pan. Beautiful. Kidoki. So that should get heated up nice and quickly if we have a nice preheated pan. We're just over about a medium, medium heat right here. Nothing too crazy. Okay, nice and chopped. Adding in, want a little hotter because I want a little tiny sizzle when I get the onion in the pan. Just a little, just a little sizzle. So we're gonna turn that up accordingly. I'm hearing it go now, perfect. Okay. Now we're just gonna work on chopping up all of the veggies and throwing them in the pan. Really, really easy. One thing I do wanna note is just, um, you know, give your veg a rinse, give your mushrooms a wipe. They might have a little bit of dirt on them. Totally normal, they grow from the ground, so I hope they do. Um, I just give them a little wipe with my, uh, with a paper towel. And if you wanna wash them off, you're certainly, you know, welcome to do that, but what do you wanna do? It's up to you, this is your kitchen. This is your recipe. All right, let's get chopping, shall we? We're gonna start with the red bell pepper. Red bell pepper done. Throw it into the pan along with the onion. Every last little bit. Any juice, man, these are juicy. Ooh wee. All right, next up, zucchini. Zucchini chopped into the pan. Nice fine little dice. In. Oops, I forgot a piece. Oh well, I'll chop it up with my <laughs> mushroom. Mushrooms next. Okay, mushroom done, and the last little bit 
of that zucchini. Look at all of these veggies. Oh my goodness. Love it. I love it. Chock full of veg. Yum. Okay, so we're gonna do the garlic. Very last, y'all. Fresh garlic. We're just gonna give this a peel if you've got a garlic press, you can use that. I just prefer my knife. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. So let's talk about that fun technique that we're gonna use to get these chimichanga ni chimichangas nice and crispy in the oven. So we're gonna start preheating our oven here pretty soon, if you haven't already, to 450. It's a really high heat, but we need that high heat um, because that is what's gonna give us that really crispy crust on the outside because again, chimichangas are typically um, deep fried to give a really nice kind of crunchy um, coating, but I don't really feel like deep frying these. Not only is it not, you know, great for you all the time, but it's really messy and it's kind of dangerous. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like the way it smells. I feel like it sticks in your hair and your clothes and whatnot. Anyway, this is a, a, a more friendly version. Um, and so, we're gonna, you know, crank up the heat on our oven to 450, and we're gonna put our sheet pan in there. We're gonna put a sheet pan in there with nothing on it, just a sheet pan um, that can withstand high temps. And we're gonna let it preheat with the oven so it gets really searing hot. And then when we're ready, when we have our chimichangas all loaded up and ready to go, we're gonna give um, our pan, a spray with cooking spray, or do a little smear of oil, whatever you prefer, um, and get that on there. And it is gonna start kind of cooking and crisping right away. Then we're gonna flip halfway through, and you'll get, we're gonna get like a nice crunchy brown on the outside, crispy. It's so good, it has a really great flavor, a really great texture. Ooh, that garlic, mmm. When it hits the pan, holy moly. My veggies are getting soft, which is great. They're getting soft pretty quickly because they're chopped up really small. And really my rule of thumb when it comes to cooking veggies, anything that you can eat raw, it doesn't need that long to cook. I like a little bit of texture. Um, and then remember, I mean, these are gonna continue to soften and continue to cook we're adding in a bunch of yummy stuff to this filling. And so I don't wanna overcook my veggies is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we're gonna add in um, some of the seasoning, really simple seasoning. We've got salt, pepper, cumin, coriander, and some paprika. That's it. Kind of a basic, basic taco seasoning. And I want those um, seasonings to hit the bottom of the pan. Um, and to really kind of awaken them. We want to bloom those herbs and spices, get the max, the max flavor that we can out of these guys. And in order to do that, we want to hit them in the hot pan with nothing else in it quite yet. Oh yeah. So while this is going, you can shred up your chicken. This is just cooked chicken breast seasoned with a little salt, pepper, and cumin. You can cut this up, you can cube it, you can use your fingers, you can have a kid do this if you want to, you can use gloves, whatever you wanna do. I kinda like the texture of shredded uh, rather than cubed, but sometimes cubing it up is a little bit easier, so you do whatever you desire. I promise it's gonna taste just as delicious any way you, any way you slice it. So, a lot of folks ask me how I cook my chicken. I just cook it in the oven. I do have a really great oven here in my kitchen um, at Harvest Market that I can, it has like presets, but at home, I typically roast my chicken at like 400 um, until it registers 160, 165 in the thickest part. Um, and sometimes it's just gonna depend how long. Time is a fickle variable, so that's why you always wanna go by temp. Um, and everyone's oven is different. So what might take, you know, 30 minutes in my oven might take longer um, or shorter in yours. So that's why we use temperature. It's more reliable. This is smelling so good. So, so good. Okay, I'm gonna finish shredding up my chicken. 
And I'll be right back. Okay, chicken is shredded. Um, I am just doing chicken. I don't have beans, but there are options to do beans or chicken or beans and chicken or just bean, whatever. Um, anyway, I'm just doing chicken. Okay, so we're gonna put our vinegar in here. We wanna hit it in the hot pan. Um, I've got some brown bits sticking to the bottom. This is gonna deglaze the pan or kind of bring those up into the veggies so that they um, go in the filling and are delicious. So go ahead and kind of use your cooking utensil to bring up all of those beautiful brown bits off the bottom. Cook off that vinegar, watch your nose. Um, it gets a little pungent. Okay. Next, we're gonna add in our cooked rice. Cooked brown rice, beautiful, done. Chicken, done. We have our salsa that's going in here. Add that all in. And I'm actually gonna turn off the heat because this is pretty much done. Add in our cheese. If you wanna save a little bit of cheese for the top, you can, you don't have to. And we're gonna give this all a stir. So this is just a really good filling, like on its own, um, by itself. Oh, a little bit of cilantro. I'm gonna save a little bit for the top as a garnish because I like the way that it looks. And then I'm gonna put some inside the filling give everything a really, really good stir. Oh boy, that is cheesy and delicious. So again, this is a really great all-purpose filling. If you don't wanna put it in a burrito, you can simply just eat it as is. Be a great meal prep for lunches even. You can make a huge batch of this and then portion it out. And you've got everything in here. So you've got your protein, your veggies, your whole grains, Super satisfying, filling, really um, well balanced in my opinion. Oh my gosh, that's a lot too. Makes a lot, which I love. Okay, now let's work on filling these puppies up, shall we? So we have our big tortillas here. So these are, bur oops, burrito size. We want nice big guys so that our filling will fit. All right, let me just wet this off here for a second. Let me do this, get everything all lined up for you. Now, if you feel like your tortillas um, might tear or um, kind of crack when you're rolling them, you can place them in a microwave for, I don't know, five, 10 seconds, just to kind of make them a little bit more pliable. Um, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some of this filling in here. So we always wanna add more than we should because, you know, we want a lot of filling, of course, um, but we want to be able to close this guy up. So really kind of like probably one cup of this filling. You probably have extra filling left over, which is not a bad thing. You can have leftovers. Okay, so then we're going to, you can do it two ways. You can bring the insides in and then work to fold it over, or you can fold it over here and then kind of fold in the sides. And I'm kind of like, evening out my filling so that it goes all the way to the end. So I'm kind of squishing it, squishing it down. And you might have to take out some of the filling. You might have to. Um, it's just kind of, you You just kind of get hot, gotta get the feel for it. And then we're just gonna roll this. And then we have a closed burrito, just like that. And if you don't wanna do that, if you don't wanna tuck in the sides, if you don't care if like the filling is falling out, you can simply just roll it like this. It's really, it's not a big deal. Okay. So let's try it the other way. So we're gonna do this and then fold it over. I actually saw this on TikTok, so, but after the fact, and then we're gonna roll it. That probably works a little bit better, doesn't it? Okay, either way, still perfect, still delicious. It's gonna taste exactly the same. So this whole time, um, well not this whole time, but in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes or so, I have been preheating, oh I forgot the lime. Add in a squeeze of lime juice in here. <laughs> and I'm not, gonna re, I'm not gonna reshoot this. I'm not gonna take the filling out of these. So add in half a lime's worth of juice, save the rest for serving. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my really hot sheet pan from the oven and I'll be right back. Okay, I pulled out my piping hot sheet pan out of the oven just now. It's really hot, so when you do this, please be careful. Don't let kids do this part. So we're gonna go ahead and spray the bottom with cooking spray. This is just an olive oil cooking spray or brush with oil, and we're gonna set these guys down, seam side down. And I like to kind of give a little press just like that. And then I'm gonna coat the tops as well. We're gonna go about four to five minutes in the oven um, at 450, and then we're gonna flip halfway through. Okay, just pull these out. It looks like my burrito kind of cracked on one side, but that's totally fine. So I did five minutes, and it should be browned. If you feel like it's not browning, just leave it in a little bit longer. Everybody's oven is different, remember. So. It just, it, you know, your oven has a mind of its own, its own little personality. So if you want it darker, if you feel like it's not getting dark enough, just keep it in there a little bit longer. Um, it could have been too that maybe your pan wasn't preheated, it wasn't hot enough, so it didn't kind of get that sear right away. So we've got a golden brown. My, my seam is closed, which is great. I just sprayed the tops before I flipped over, and then we're gonna go back in for another five-ish minutes, give or take a couple minutes. Okay, I just pulled my chimneys out of the oven. And, oh, baby. These look, gosh, sorry, it's still really, really hot. I'm just gonna flip these onto my cutting board. You see that? Do you see that crispy? Oh. Yeah, that's the crisp that we're looking for. Again, leave it in the oven until it gets this nice crispy crust. Everybody's oven is different um, and perhaps not calibrated correctly. So if you're like, well, I did the five minutes, but it's still not brown, then just leave it in longer until it is. Oh. Boy, look at that. Piping hot, delicious. Top it with salsa, sour cream, any cheese, devour it. It is so delicious. I'm so excited for these guys. Make yourself a margarita if you, if you want one. Uh, if it's Tuesday, um, National Margarita Day, just a fun little thing. Um, yeah, I hope you guys like this recipe. Sorry, I don't have it prettied up on a nice pretty plate, but these are still piping, piping hot. But I really hope you enjoy this one. Thanks so, so much for joining me as always. And I'll see you guys next time.